Hello, Kevin Never Hill. I'm the family pastor at Journey Church, and I know I'm coming late. Uh, 10 10 became 10 at 10 became 10 at 10 10 today. Um, at the Walmart, I had a grocery pickup, and of course, they were very busy. Um, so, you know, life goes on, but um, I, I do love these times. I look forward to it every day. So sometimes I'm going to be late but I will eventually get here. Um, so good morning, everybody. And we're going to be, this is part three of my book um, that I, I, I'm breaking out into the teaching, teaching on the kingdom of God. And it's actually going to be, um, I'm in the process. Some people were wondering what book this is. And no, it's not written yet. Actually, this is the process of writing it as I break it down. Um, we're going to be writing it. Um, so it's, you, you get to kind of get that, the book as it's coming out. Um, and so it will be a number of weeks. And this is just sort of an experiment to see how far this goes. But, um, you know, it, it's something that's really helpful for me. And hopefully that it will be something that, that's really helpful for those who are watching it live and then and those who will watch it later. Um, so today's topic is what is the kingdom of God? So last two, this is the third one. Basically, the last two were the preface um, talking about what, um, how to receive um, this wor um, word. And, and we talked about... Um, the um, parable of the storehouse. We're bringing out something new and old. You can go back and watch that. And then yesterday we talked about the name Jesus Land and, and what it meant and sort of the tongue-in-cheek version of it, um, but then also the sincere version of it. Um, and I would like to do a little disclaimer before I get going here is that a lot of this teaching here um, and a lot of some of the terms here um, come from different sources, but one of them, one of the big influences in my life has been Buxy Cavi of the Meeting House. Um, and so it, it was sort of funny as I was, as a few years, I've been working on this book for a number of years. And um, as I was sort of, as God was sort of downloading it into my heart and I was getting it formed and, and thinking of the phrases I was going to do, at the exact same time, the Meeting House came out with a series called Jesus Nation. Um, and I was sort of very excited, but also sort of, you know, frustrated because um, they were using some of the same terms that I was using. And I was like, oh, well, you know, um, but that but it really sort of brought um, some concrete understanding in my heart and mind. Um, so I would recommend going um, and listening to the Meeting House, meetinghouse.com. Um, a few years ago, they did a series called Jesus Nation. Um, and, and so it's kind of saying the same thing. Um, and uh, But there was a few phrases that he used and a few ways he described things that, you know, I wanted to come up with my own phrase, but he just did it so perfectly. And so I will be giving, uh, I'll be saying exactly when he, you know, what, what phrases and, and what has come from him. I'll give him, you know, credits for that. Um, but that is a series called Jesus Nation, another one called Reunion. And, and um, that has been very influential on me. Okay. So now I only have 10 minutes and I've used five of them. So actually, we'll start the clock right now for 10 minutes. Um, and today is the, the big question is, what is the kingdom of God? Um, and we're going to be hitting one main part of scripture today, and that is Matthew 16, 24 to 26. Um, so let's go at the very beginning. What is the kingdom of God? And let's break down the word kingdom right now into what it means. It's actually two words smashed into one. And those two words are king and dom. Not dumb. Dom. King and dom. And of course, dom stands for dominion. So kingdom is a squished word that just very simply says it's the king's dominion. In other words, it's the place of the king, the king's ownership, the king's control. Um, dominion, different words for dominion, we don't necessarily use that concept in America and Canada. Um, you guys, America has a president, us in Canada, we have a prime minister, um, but they don't have absolute power. They have a certain amount of power, they have a great amount of power, but they don't, like the kings of old, have absolute power. In fact, you know, the whole phrase, power corrupts, absolute power corrupts absolutely, you know, kind of led to the Magna Carta where we took away the authority of the king, of one person that had dominion over the life and death and nation and country. So and that's what dominion means. It's authority, it's control, it's power over. And here's a word we're going to use a lot, will. 
you could say the dominion, the king's dominion is the will. And this is the phrase that Bruxy in, in, in Jesus Nation series used. He says, the kingdom of God is the place where the king's will hoards sway. Um, and we're actually going to be dividing the book into four parts, four main words. And the, the words are um, will, gospel, king, passion. But for what is the kingdom of God? It's the dominion of the king. The kingdom of God is the place where the king's, or God's will, hoards sway. Um, and in understanding of the kingdom, we got to realize it's not about you. It's not about me. It's not about you. I was watching um, um, Doctor Strange the, the other week. And I love that one scene when they're outside looking at the snowfall. And he got the realization when she, you know, his mentor said, bottom line is, it's not about you. I was like, oh, well, that's a novel concept. And we're going to look at that in Matthew 16, 24, 26. Um, and Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself. Deny himself. And so he realize it's not about me. Take up his, his cross and follow me. So three things. Deny himself. Take up his cross. Follow him. Um, for whoever wants to save his life will lose it. For whoever loses his life for me will find it. So the kingdom of God is often called the upside down kingdom. We're going to really get into this later. But it, it's saying that everything we think in the kingdom of man, what we value and, and, and the way we think kingdom of God turns it up on its head so we hear this a lot if you want to save your life you got to lose it um, for whoever wants to save his life will lose it but whoever loses his life for me will find it what good will it be for a man if he gains the whole world yet forfeits his soul or what can a man give in exchange for his soul um, the problem is that the church we have been trained to try to do the kingdom of God, but in the format and understanding of the kingdom of man. So in other words, we want to do God's will, but we want to do it in our way. We want to do it with the way we understand power structure and the way we want to do it. And that's why we talked about the Jesus land, almost like the amusement park concept. It's we want Jesus. We want the kingdom of God. We want all of that, but we want it in our comfort zone. We want it. We want to understand blessing as in something that brings us comfort and entertainment. And so we make the kingdom of God about us. Um, and we see this in the way, you know, we even look at Jesus. You know, we, we love to say Jesus left the 99 to find me. We sing that song about, you know, Jesus left them all so he could come and find me. We talk about Jesus as my personal Lord and Savior. Um, the most popular verse, the verse that most people say, this is my verse, the verse that holds true to me. Is Jeremiah 29 11 and a lot of us know this verse that says God saying I know the plans I have for you plans to help you and not to harm you plans to give you a hope and a future and we're like I love that verse because it's God saying it's about me here's the deal none of that's wrong but none of that's right either it's the right actions does Jesus leave the 99 to come for you? He says he does. Jeremiah 29, 11, Does God know the plans he has for you? Plans to help you or not to harm you? Give you hope in the future? Yes. But here's the thing. It's the right actions. But we're drawing the wrong conclusions from them. We're drawing the conclusions that it's about us. Yeah, we need to be saved. But I've now got my own personal savior. He came for me. And all of that's true. But then we have the mentality in the kingdom of man that it's about us. When the exact opposite is about, it's about him. It's about the king's will, not ours. That's why it says here, deny yourself. Take up your cross. Follow me. That's the calling into the kingdom. Um, we are called to view the king 
kingdom, not through the lens of us, but through the lens of the king. Uh, speaking about Buxy and Buxy and, and the meeting house, they talk about, you know, don't offer salvation as um, come and get a person. You know, Jesus is your person or savior. And so get saved. He says, no, offer him as Lord. Come to Jesus as making him Lord. And if you do that, you get the say you get the savior in as as the as the package deal. It's a package deal. You come for Jesus, follow Jesus as your Lord, and he saves you. But if you come for him just as a savior, you don't necessarily always put him as Lord, and you're not entering the kingdom of heaven. Um so it says, pick up your cross, deny yourself, pick up your cross, follow me. If you lose your life for, for Jesus, you will find it. This is the upside down kingdom. Now, I want to take the rest of the time to, to go back in a little bit of something. Um, remember, we don't just pull scripture out and throw it at you. We, we want to use scripture to translate scripture. So we're going to find out what happened before this. And it's very interesting. Um, these verses, you know, we picked up halfway through a conversation. In in Matthew 16, you know, he just came from the Pharisees. They demanded a sign. He was saying, don't you even know the times? And that's a teaching we're going to get into. He warns them about the yeast of the Pharisees. You know, Peter has just done this great confession of faith. Who do, who do they say I am? Oh, they say you're Elijah. They say you're John the Baptist. Well, who do you say I am, Peter? You are the Christ. And he said, only the Holy Spirit gave that to you so you know that so Peter had just had like this big win and was awesome and then we go into 1624 and from that time on Jesus began to explain to his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem suffer many things at the hand of the elders chief priests and teachers of the law and that he must be killed and on the third day raised to life the disciples seemed surprised by all this you know did Jesus talk about it in parables no he just said going to Jerusalem they're gonna kill me on the third day I'm gonna rise from the dead I mean how clear could it be and I love this Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him the chutzpah on Peter rebuking the person he knows is the Christ Peter took him aside you can imagine you know uh, Sylvia Evans says I can't speak the emotions here because my Bible is written in monotone but I can imagine um, Peter took him aside, began to rebuke him. Never, Lord, he said. This shall never happen to you. So here was Peter trying to rebuke Jesus. And then Jesus turns back and gives Peter the rebuking of his life. This is what he says. Jesus turned and said to Peter, Get behind me, Satan. Oh my goodness. Can you imagine Jesus looking at you and calling you Satan? Get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You do not have in mind the things of God, but the things of men. And that's when Jesus goes into it. Then Jesus says to us, his disciples, If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself, take up his cross, follow me. So Peter was rebuked. Um, and hard. He thought he was rebuking Jesus and it just flipped on its head. Um, because here's the thing is that we see that what Peter was doing, why does Jesus call out the Satan he sees in, 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 in Peter? We're not saying Saint Peter was Satan, but that was the work of the enemy working through him and his mindset. Um, because what Peter is doing is he's sharing the belief of the kingdom of man. In the kingdom of man, its belief is that Jesus should have comfort. Just he should have victory. Nothing but good times because he's the king. This is, this. He, he's saying you could be the king, but you got to do it in the way and the mindset that we understand, which was the kingdom of man. And he says, Jesus says it right there, get, thee behind, get behind me, Satan. You are stumbling back to me. You do not have in mind the things of God but the things of man. Peter was coming after not thinking about God's will, but what he should be doing for man. And so he had good intentions. Jesus, no, you don't have to die. You don't do this. But God was saying, no, he's taking up his, he's going to deny himself. 
take up his cross. And he's saying to them, if you want to be my disciples, you will deny yourself. Take up your cross and come with me. Come, come follow me after me. Because the kingdom of God is not our will, but yours be done. What does it say in the Lord's Prayer? Our Father who, who are in heaven, um, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. What does Jesus say in the garden? Not my will, Father, yours be done. Um, so that is what the kingdom is. It's the place where the king's will hold sway. I got two bonuses. I know I'm, I'm, I'm at 10 minutes now. Okay, I might be coming in and out with bad internet. So this next two parts are bonus. If you want to stop cutting here, that's way beyond my 10 at 10. Um, but I love these things that, and, and they kind of have to do with the same topic. One of the bonuses, one of the two bonuses I'm going to throw at you today is, you know, what is the difference between, you know, Matthew calls it the kingdom of heaven and everybody else calls it the kingdom of God. What is the difference between the two? Um, I had some people say, oh, well, kingdom of God, he's referring to this. Kingdom of heaven is something different. Uh, no, bottom line, same thing. Exact same thing. The reason Matthew, um, most scholars say Matthew uses the word kingdom of heaven instead of the kingdom of God is it was in the Hebrew culture that using the term God um, was sacred. You, you, you can't even call him by name. Um, and so you wanted to limit the amount of time because you didn't want to use his name in vain. It was a, a big thing. So Matthew just simply called it kingdom of heaven. So he didn't have to overuse um, the name of God. And you can understand the same thing. We see it in, in the Lord's Prayer. Let thy kingdom come, let thy will be done. So it is God, the kingdom that is in heaven is on earth. Um, in the Middle Ages, they used to have to write the scriptures by hand. Um, and they would write it. And every time there were some certain monks that every time they got to the, the term God, they would have to go wash their hands um, as a, you know, as sort of saying, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm using the term God's name with great respect. So they probably really liked writing Matthew, Kingdom of Heaven, because they had to wash their hands a lot less. So Kingdom of Heaven, um, as seen in Matthew, Kingdom of God, seen in the rest of the Synoptic Gospels and the rest of the, the Bible, same thing. Same thing. Um, interchangeable. Um, last bonus I wanted to read. Um, remember we said, we don't just pull scripture and throw it at you. We find out what is the story that happened before it, what happened after it, what's the context of it, what's, what does the book say about it, what does the writing say about it. Um, and so what we just did is I read you the first part of the story, but I left off the last bit of the story, which is not good scriptural uh, study because you really want to pull scripture out of the context. So that bonus is going to be verse 28 when Jesus finishes this. Peter rebukes Jesus. Jesus rebukes Peter right back and says, your thinking is the devil's thinking because it's the thinking of the kingdom of man. If anyone comes after me, they must deny themselves, take up the cross, follow me. If you want to save your life, you'll lose it. If you want to lose it, if you lose your life for me, you'll find it. Um, what good will it be for a man who gains the whole world yet forfeits his soul? What can a man give in exchange for a soul? So um, 16, 27 to the end. For the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels. And then he will re reward each person according to what he has done. I tell you the truth. Some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And that's a big question. So he goes into a prophecy of the second coming of Christ um, in the end. And then he kind of seems to say, but some of you are not even going to die and you're going to see this. And that's confuses a lot of people because everyone there, Jesus hasn't come back for the second time yet. Everyone there is dead. You know, well, maybe he meant they will be raised from the dead and then see it or no, they did not taste death. So what is he saying? Very simply, he's talking about two different times. First verse um, in 27, for the Son of Man is going to come in his Father's glory with his angels, and then he will reward each person according to what he has done. That is talking about the second coming. We are in the birth pains now. We're waiting for that return of Christ. But then he's talking about another first coming. 
um, in verse 28, I tell you the truth, some who are standing here will not taste death before they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. And we're going to be talking further on about how Jesus is setting up the kingdom there. He is saying the kingdom of God in your midst. The kingdom of God is coming. Repent for the kingdom of God is coming. We're going to be talking about how at the crucifixion was the coronation. And this is something that Buxy uses, the term Buxy uses. The crucifixion was the coronation of the kingdom. So those there did see him come in his kingdom when they saw him rise from the dead. And so that's what is referring to is Jesus comes into his kingdom at the cross. And we're going to go into the whole history. But something interesting, just to finish, remember, Scripture translates Scripture. So what is immediately after uh, Matthew 16? Matthew 17 goes immediately into the transfiguration. So we're going to talk about the transfiguration as the beginning, coming in of the kingdom of God. Um, so that is what is the kingdom of God tomorrow. I don't remember what tomorrow's is. Um, well, we're continuing on in the introduction of Jesus land. And we're going to be doing two weeks on the introduction and then we're going to get into the four words. Will, gospel, king, passion. And we're going to go through the entire Bible through this, looking at the coming of the kingdom of God. Um, the way I'm going to do this, because this is obviously taking me more than 10 minutes, um, and, and that's fine. I'm going to get better at this. Um, I do want to have time for questions. Um, and sometimes, you know, I not have the questions here. So um, I don't necessarily able to read everything you guys have to say. Um, but at the end, I will say I'll open it up. If anybody has a question, I'll stay on a little bit longer to try to answer what I can. If not, or if you're watching this afterwards, if you will message me any questions you have or comments you have, at the end, I'm going to just kind of open it up and we'll discuss anything that's um, on your mind or any responses or, or insights. Since I'm writing the book, this is very helpful for me. If you ask questions or you give me insights of what God has been showing you, because that will open up my perspective in the same way that the two messages from Bruxy, um, Jesus Nation and Reunion really sort of opened my heart and mind to what God is doing. I would love it if you guys would have a part of that too. Um, I won't necessarily wait around too long at the end, but please message me and then I could add it to the end of the next lesson, which will be tomorrow at 10 a.m. if Walmart doesn't make me come back and life gets in the way, but you know what, so be it. Anyways, okay, I'm not seeing any questions, so I will finish this one and see you guys tomorrow. God bless.